Shalom Aleichem Chavra. So this week's parsha, we have the story with the brothers and Yosef and the selling of Yosef. And it's tremendously difficult to read these psukim and to understand what is going on. How in the world do the children of the Avos, are, are part of our forefathers, the Shvatim, the holy Shvatim, they go and they sell their brother, they throw him in a pit, they want to kill him, don't kill him this way, kill him that way, don't kill him, throw him in a pit, sell him. It's, it's just, it's so mind-boggling how in the world this could happen. They come back, they lie to their father, what's going on? When I was reading the Pesukim, it reminded me of another question of the similar vein. Shlomo Melech. The king of the, the, the king of Bnei Yisrael, the child of David Melch, the one who builds the base of Mikdash, the smartest person in the world, the person who tells us Hevel of all him, the whole world is worthless, and he ends up going and sinning. He ends up marrying more women than he's supposed to marry, and Hashem ends up punishing him. How did this happen? How in the world does this happen? So Chazal actually talk about this, and there are three opinions about Shlomo Melech. By Shlomo, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai says. Kipshuto, we all have Yitzharas. Shlomo Melech was, was a human being. He had Yitzhara, and he wanted to marry these women. Unbelievable. No one could say it if it wasn't for Shimon Bar Yochai. But that's what it says in the Gemara. Day number two is he was over the Issa Daraisa of don't marry many women. Oh, and the Gemara explains what, how, did it, what, how did that happen. He thought that it was a siyag. It was in order that you don't get astray. He thought he wasn't going to go astray, so he decided it was fine for him. He was obviously wrong. That's the second opinion. The third opinion is no. He was trying to do kiruv. He was a tzaddik. He was trying to do kiruv. Now, which one is it? Who, what, what was he doing? What was he thinking? Perhaps the answer is he was thinking all three. What do I mean by that? Perhaps consciously he said, I'm going to do Kiruv. I'm going to do Kiruv. Oh, there's an issue to marry more women. No, that's a siyag. It's okay for me. I'm doing Kiruv. It's not going to affect me. So Lemaise, what he was thinking about is like that third day. The second day says, forget what you were thinking. Lemaise, you were over an issue to Raisa. And if Shimba Yochai says, you're right. Consciously, that's what you were thinking. But deep down, deep, deep down, it was because of the Yei Sahara. Really, you had a Yitzhara. That's why you thought that you could do Kiruv. That's why you thought that. And there's no Machlokas. What happened with the brothers? I don't know. There are many different opinions. There are many different uh, theories. How it could be. Maybe Yosef was Chayiv Misa. Maybe they thought Yosef was a threat. Maybe they, they were thinking about, about the past generations of, of different sibling rivalry. But the Torah doesn't tell us all that stuff. Because I'm sure consciously... They had their thoughts. They had their mahalchim. They had what they thought. What they were, thought they were doing the right thing. But the Torah doesn't give us those thoughts. Because the Torah says you have to look deeper. Don't just stop, stop, stop at the conscious. Look deeper. Maybe there's some nagios over here. Maybe there's something that we're doing wrong. We could learn a lesson for our own life. Before we make decisions, look hard and think deeply into ourselves. Are we really being honest with ourselves? Are we really doing the right things? Especially when it comes to family matters. Before we start judging the brothers, do we ever make fun of our brothers? The Jewish people were all brothers. Do we ever pick on people? Have we ever heard of family rivalry? Whether it's money, whether it's other things, whether it's power, whatever it could be. We have it in our own in our own Daladamos. Before we start judging the brothers, let's start judging ourselves. Let's start treating our families better and look in, internally and make sure that we're doing the right thing. Have a good Shabbos and a Freil Chim Chanukah. Good Shabbos, good Shabbos, good Shabbos.